Welcome in everybody. Welcome to Chainlink Tech Talk 15. My name is Max Melcher. I am the go-to-market lead for Chainlink Proof of Reserve. I'm excited to be discussing tokenized gold today with Chainlink Proof of Reserve, specifically highlighting cash and their cash gold token. We are very fortunate to have Dias Lanpan, CTO of Cash, to provide a deep dive into the cash gold token and specifically how they're working with Chainlink Proof of Reserve. Uh, good morning, uh, Dias. Welcome. Hi, folks. Yep. How's everyone doing? Thanks, Max, for having me. Yeah. Great. Uh, before we get into the deep dive on uh, cash and uh, their operations with Chainlink Proof of Reserve, we're going to provide some background on uh, tokenized assets. And so what I want to bring up is off-chain assets that are tokenized. If we think about the tokens we interact with today, uh, there are those that are native to the chain, like Ether and Bitcoin. And then there are those that are representations of assets uh, held off-chain or cross-chain. So examples of this would be like a fiat-backed stablecoin, where the reserves are you know, dollars in a bank account. Um, it could be something like wrap Bitcoin on Ethereum, where the reserves are on Bitcoin, um, and it's represented on Ethereum. And it can also be, like we'll talk about today, uh, tokenized gold, where the representation is backed by gold bars in a vault. Um, there's some others listed here, financial instruments, precious metals, real estate, art, sustainable assets like carbon credits. Um, these are also known as RWAs or real world assets. There are a number of benefits to utilizing these uh, real world assets. There's liquidity, transparency, composability, these assets that exist in the real world can now interact with DeFi protocols. Um, they can be accessible to anyone across the world who has access to the blockchain. Um, and they're most importantly transparent. Um, you can see who they've been transferred to, how they've been utilized, and there's a immutable record of history on the blockchain. These assets also carry risk in that many times they have a single issuer um, and that issuer has substantial control over the asset. On chain, you can't see natively if that asset is still backed one to one or if there's any reserves at all. And that leads us to proof of reserve. So with any pro product, I think it's important that you identify the solution and, and the problem you're really trying to solve. And today we've identified that there is a large reliance on these asset issuers and inherent trust assumptions with these tokenized assets. Um, they control the asset, they can emit more, they can burn. Um, and so in many ways, this control and this trust devalues a lot of these security principles of blockchain and decentralized finance. So Chainlink Proof of Reserve aims to minimize these trust assumptions. Um, and we do that by bringing reserve data for these assets on chain. So both the asset issuer, DeFi protocols, and general users can see at all times that the assets they carry are backed one-to-one. -one. Great. I think this is a great uh, diagram to kind of illustrate what Proof of Reserve does. This case is an off-chain to on-chain use case. We can see that the Chainlink network monitors the reserve balance of a given asset vault. Again, this could be US dollars, this could be gold, it could be really anything. Whenever that reserve balance changes, the Chainlink node network comes to consensus on what the new value is and updates the on-chain contract. We talk about the benefits of this. I think the last three months really give us great insight into why this is important. Um, by putting reserve data on chain at all times, we can reduce insolvency risk. Um, there's no waiting for a monthly audit to come out where your buddies with the auditor, um, you know, it's not as expensive as a traditional audit. It improves transparency for the users because at all times they can see on chain that the asset is backed one to one. Uh, it also prevents systemic failures in DeFi. So we're gonna get into a bit more detail on the three parties that are involved here in the next slide. On the token issuer front, with proof of reserve, what we're really trying to do is set a standard for all of these tokenized assets. And we're doing that by having these asset issuers reference the proof of reserve feed in their minting function. So one use case is to say transparently, we can only mint what an independent set of validators says we have in our reserves. Um, that's one use case for token issuers. For DeFi app developers, if you're accepting an asset that's backed by off-chain reserves, you want to know if that asset is still backed one-to-one. -one. You can think of incidents like infinite min attacks, um, or even when assets on the reserve have disappeared and now are not backed, you don't want to continue accepting that asset into your platform. So utilizing proof of reserve as a DeFi protocol, you can verify the collateral and you can affect your protocol's operations based on that information. 
The last thing we mentioned this before is for token holders. Uh, if you're holding, you know, I guess one of the things I like about DeFi is that it's a free market. And if you have two assets of equal value, um, but one of them is backed by proof of reserve and you can see at all times the collateral back in that asset, I think it's a simple choice for users on which one they want to hold day to day. Um, with that brief background, we're going to take advantage of our time with DS and get in some questions. Uh, DS, just to start off, I would love to know a bit more about your role at Cash and uh, what led you to working in blockchain. Cool. So, you know, uh, well, I, I, I take care of all the technology. Uh, I'm accountable for technology at Cash and the strategy for that. Uh, uh, maybe I can introduce a bit about how I got into blockchain uh, as well. So I, I started in the blockchain space uh, with Balaji's course on uh, startup engineering, because back then, like, you know, we had a startup and no clue on how to kind of like do the engineering for it. So, you know, it was very timely, the course. And as part of the course, uh, it was kind of mandatory that you do like this uh, uh, project on Bitcoin. Right? So I did this kind of like, uh, you know, crowdfunding site or something using Bitcoin to pass the course. And that's how I got in touch with Bitcoin. And then I met a co-founder. We, we actually created uh, 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 like the first kind of like fractionized gold system uh, back then. And at that point we used uh, it, it bit as the it bit, which is now Paxos as the liquidity provider and uh, silver bullion as our storage provider. So I'll get into a bit like, you know, why, why I talk about them, but like, yeah, it's kind of interesting uh, back then, like, we, we used uh, OP return on the Bitcoin blockchain to kind of create like this uh, fractionalized gold system. Um, but I think we were too early back then, but you know, so that, that's kind of like my introduction to the space. Uh, and then, you know, have been like still learning, still working, still participating in Hackathon, still like, you know, still very active and having fun at, in the space. Yeah, that's that's me. That, that's awesome. Um... We'd love to know a bit more about Cash too uh, for the audience as well. We know it's a token issuer of CGT, but we'd love to know too a bit more about the organization's background. All right, sure, sure, Mark. So, uh, so Cash, Cash was spun off from Silver Bullion, like you know, I kind of mentioned them before. So, Silver Bullion is basically uh, one of the world's, uh, like, building one of the world's largest walls here in Singapore with a capacity of fifteen thousand tons. Uh, they're basically a bullion dealer, and you know, Cash was uh, like kind of for them uh, at that point, it was like something that needs to be done uh, basically because they're into the digital space, right? Because they saw a lot of like people like us trying to, uh, you know, like use it to make our own fractionalized gold. And they were the people who have the know-how because they were they were attached to the bullion industry and they were attached to the physical asset industry uh, rather than, you know, people who were not from this space. So uh, Silver Bullion spun off cash uh, in 2019 and uh, yeah, what cash does is basically it's an infrastructure layer uh, that converts uh, physical items uh, such as gold into the digital space, right? Uh, and cash right now, we have four walls. Uh, we, have, we utilize four walls, so it's not our walls, but like because we are just like the infrastructure layer in between. We utilize walls uh, across uh, three continents. Uh, so we have walls in um, Zurich uh, with Loomis, right? We have uh, a vault in Frankfurt, again, uh, uh, Lumis, we have IDS from uh, uh, the US, uh, Dylan Gage. So we kind of like have these partner walls and then, you know, the vault operators directly operate uh, together with us and we have like uh, installed our software with them and things like that, yeah. That's awesome. I, I think, you know, gold plays an interesting role with monetary policy. Uh, in many ways, there's a strong correlation to cryptocurrency, but I'm, I'm curious why, why gold um, and are there plans to list other commodities in the future? Oh yeah, so um, gold, I think, has been like the store of value for like millennia, uh, right? Like if if you think about it, uh, with the changes in monetary policy, it like gold just came out of it, uh, you know, in, in, into fiat currency quite recently, right? And then it's just like in the last decade that we have cryptocurrency, or you know, maybe twenty years back we have internet and we have virtual currencies and things like that. So gold is trusted by a lot of people, uh, so it's kind of like you know hard to take away that trust, and I think that's. Uh, and it has that store of value feature, right? The only problem with gold is that it's physical. It's really heavy. We have like, you know, in the walls, we have a lot of gold and uh, it's quite dense and heavy. It's not something that you can barter with or trade with. It's not something that, you know, you can carry around with, right? Uh, but tokenized gold with its properties of like, you know, having it on the blockchain, having a ledger that's public and that's distributed and that's uh, immutable. I think those are important properties to make that physical asset, uh, to kind of maintain the properties of that physical asset at the same time making it liquid so that means in the current generation um like you know we don't 
you, you know, we kind of like don't even want to carry cash in our pocket, right? So, uh, although, you know, I, I would say that's a pretty good thing to do, uh, but, you know, let alone gold, right? So, yeah, so I think uh, uh, tokenized gold was like, you know, for us, I think it's a way to go back to like the basics, to have like a transparent layer um, that kind of converts that physical asset into uh, digital, uh, so to say. Yeah. And I think, uh, it, it, you know, I mean, you can see in the last, uh, like we had GFC, we had, now we have another uh, crisis coming upon us. So in all of these, like, you know, where do you go back to? Like, you know, it, it, it's like one of the natural tendencies to go back to what, what worked for like, uh, like a lot, like, you know, centuries. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there's a lot of ties to um, other cryptocurrencies in that respect as well. Um, you know, it's the tokenized gold landscape, it, it's uh, growing. And I think a lot of people may be familiar with Paxos's Pax G and Tether's Tether Gold. What makes CGT or Cash Gold token different from those others? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so, so, mm, so, so it's kind of interesting because, like, for me, uh, uh, like, you know, I'm kind of familiar with Paxos. I had, like, uh, when they were early on, I had, you know, I used to, talk to a lot of their teams, uh, team members. Uh, so it's kind of interesting for me. Uh, uh, but other than that, like what kind of differentiates, you know, uh, Paxos, Pax Gold and um, like uh, Tether Gold, right? From uh, cash is like cash, cash, we, we're quite simple, but we use like, and I think one of like, you know, we use this something called a cash gold explorer, right? Uh, what that does is it kind of creates like a real time audit possibility for anybody. It's a public system that anybody can audit like, how many, uh, like, you can see how many tokens are there, you can see how much tokens got redeemed, you can see how much uh, actual physical gold is in which vault, where, with, you know, what's the brand, what's the amount of weight in it, what's the purity, what's the serial number of that specific bar. So it's, whereas like, for example, in Pax G or Tether Gold, uh, the touch with the Boolean space is missing, right? Because these guys, I think they're not from the Boolean space, uh, so to say, they're from more like, you know, like the, the FinTech space, right? So uh, what happens there is that you don't get like, you know, you don't get clarity into where uh, you, you get periodic attestations, like, you know, attestations or auditing is like a secondary uh, thing. If you see the, if you see the audit reports, it's like, you know, you, you don't get, you don't get to know if it's troy ounces or ounces. Um, so there's a lot of missing links in the attestations and audits. Whereas for us, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's on real time. Uh, it's auditable anytime. You can just go into the Explorer, see how much gold is there, and you can tally it with uh, the actual, uh, the actual uh, the CGT that's minted, right? And so that kind of like, you know, that proof of reserve uh, and with, uh, you know, Chainlink's proof of reserve system. So that kind of like ties up as a completely auditable system real time, right? So I think that's a, that's, that's very different. Whereas in Pax G and Tether, you know, the, the attestations are published like days later. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit different uh, from the very beginning, right? So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great answer. I, I'm curious because with any of these real world assets, there's clearly a cost associated with running the business, maintaining the asset. I imagine for you know a gold token, you need a vault, you need management, security, auditing costs. I think it's important that these real world assets are transparent about their commercial model. Uh, is it possible for you to maybe give some details on uh, how CGT manages uh, their finances and specifically pays for the reserve uh, vaults and such? Uh, yeah, sure. So, you know, for us, we like we wanted to make everything sustainable from like kind of like the day one. Uh, so what we do uh, is that we charge uh, storage fees uh, at 25 basis points. We did have transfer fees, but we kind of like, you know, we made, made a business decision to, to remove it for now. Uh, but uh, so, so it's, you know, we had, we had a 10, a 10 basis point uh, transfer fee as well. So uh, the storage fee is for us, like the main, the main way that we uh, kind of uh, see how we can like, you know, monetize this because for us, uh, yeah, storing that physical goal, it, it does occupy space. You need to pay the wall providers uh, some capital, right? Like, like, because, you know, like, I mean, users don't like fees. I mean, especially today, everybody likes to see the numbers, you know, very nice, but at the end of the day, these are physical items. These physical items cost storage, uh, especially like you know, in, in jurisdictions that are friendly, they're even more expensive, right? So, so, uh, so yeah, so so it, it is expensive. We, we, so we we basically have the business model to charge for storage fees and transfer fees. We also charge like a fifty basis point for redemption, right? So if you want to redeem your bar, you have to pay a bit higher. Uh, 
but that's that. So these are the three fees, and these fees are transparent. They're, they're visible on the blockchain. You can, um, you know, you can audit it. You can see when we changed it, uh, and everything is like uh, completely visible. Now, um, uh, just to kind of like point out, like for the, uh, because you know we made this decision to be very transparent about the storage fees. Uh, whereas, like for example, you take Pax G or you know Tether Gold, it isn't very clear how they you know cover storage, right? Or audit and insurance. Uh, so, so because like you know they kind of say it was free storage. Uh, so I'm not really sure about that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So that's that's about us uh, and how we charge uh, fees. Yeah, I think you know in light of recent events, more users are asking for what happens behind the scenes and a, a company's commercial model. Um, is important to know, especially in the real world asset uh, tokenization process. I think uh, it'd be interesting to know if I came to you with a gold bar, um, if I had one, what's the process like to get that on chain? Like, can you walk me through the steps? Is, is that is that even feasible? Um, how, how would that work? Yeah, I, I, if we could pull up like the Explorer, I could like kind of like show you as well. So yeah, hey, thanks. Uh, so yeah, so here, basically this is what the Cash Gold Explorer looks like. It is, uh, it's kind of like taking data from a grab chain system. Uh, we can get that, get to that in a bit. But what happens here is that like, let's say you come to the Cash Gold website and you like, you know, log in and you, uh, you can then like verify yourself. After you've done the verification, you can actually like tokenize physical gold. So if you come with a, like, let's say like a hundred gram bar. So we only do hundred grams and one kilo bars. So let's say you come with the one kilo bar, right? So what happens is that um, uh, you take this to the partner wallet, whichever one is located next to you. So, you know, the, the cash flow site will walk you through the steps. You come to the partner wallet, you deposit, you deposit the piece of gold uh, inside that, uh, inside the wallet. Then what happens is the grand chain system kind of takes over. So the vault operator has like an RFID scanner and a testing machine. So he tests like, you know, is this real physical gold, right? So, uh, and each of these events, like the gold arriving has like an event uh, uh, broadcasted. So if you could like scroll down a bit in the parcel history, you can see this like, okay, this bar of gold has come into the vault. So there's a wall scan, right? And then um, after the wall scan is done, the vault operator themselves like tests it and then um, kind of assigns it to cash, right? And in this, like if you scroll up, you can see like, if you scroll up, you can see like, okay, this is 99.9 .9 grams of gold. It is of, uh, you know, triple four purity. Uh, so all and you know who's a refiner all this information is stored um, as metadata this metadata is then hashed and for each of these bars we broadcast events all these events are broadcast onto uh, onto the chain right so 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 there's always like this immutable data of what happened with your gold bar or you know like whoever brings it in and uh, once all this is done um, what, what we do is like okay the, the vault operator locks it to cash from there cash can take it forward so now it's like, you know, it, we are in the infrastructure layer of cash. So cash, we have uh, our own backend system. So we just say, okay, lock this bar. And once we lock the bar, um, the grand chain uh, system picks it up that cash has locked this bar. And then what happens is that, you know, it emits uh, the data to chain link, right? Uh, sorry, not to chain link, but chain link nodes, right? And the chain link nodes uh, pick it up. Uh, they do, so grand chain is an independent system. So the chain link nodes uh, pick this up that, okay, this much grams of gold has been allocated to cash, right? And uh, after that, we can then proceed to mint, right? Because now using the Chainlink uh, proof of reserve, this data is in the proof of reserve and it's broadcasted on chain. Then our token using that uh, can mint up to that amount of uh, tokens. So we mint that amount of tokens and then in your, like, you know, in your cash gold profile, you can actually then um, put in your Ethereum address or, you know, um, um, like, and then we can then send those tokens to you. So like uh, you would get CGT to the Ethereum address that you kind of specified on your on your profile. So that's how new cash gold tokens get issued. Uh, and this, you know, so that's the kind of flow. Yeah, I mean, like uh, happy to take questions later on this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we may have some questions on that at the end. You know, for me personally, um, you think about gold vault, gold vaults and gold bars, you think about them stacked up, maybe in a pyramid. Uh, I did not know until using your Explorer that they're all QR code and bags. That makes a lot more sense. Um, on that note, if I were to want to, you know, redeem gold that I, you know, say I bought CGT on Uniswap, does the reverse work as well? Am I able to redeem um, through you guys as well? Yeah, of course. So if you if you look at our chain, uh, you know, if you look at the data from our, uh, from our uh, uh, system, 
you would see a lot of redemptions, right? So people have been using uh, gold to trade and like, you know, with comparison with like, for example, uh, uh, Ethereum price going up. So, you know, they would trade like on Uniswap and whenever they, they make sufficient trades, they want to retrieve physical, uh, they actually do a redemption. So you can again log into the site, uh, do your verification. Once, you, once you're verified, you can actually just deposit, like, you know, you can choose. So again, we use this, uh, the same explorer so that you can choose which bars you want to retrieve. And uh, yeah, like, you know, depending on how much CGT you have, right, you can then redeem uh, the gold token, uh, sorry, the gold bar, right? So yeah, you can. And then uh, we have a few options. So we can ship it to you or we can, uh, you can come into the vault and pick it up. Uh, across those, yeah, across those, I mean, you know, so we have it in Dallas, uh, Zurich, uh, Frankfurt, Dubai, and Singapore. I might have to try that out myself uh, just to see an option. That's incredible. Um, you touched on Gram Chain and how it provides real time reserve attestation. I'm yeah. curious, you know, even in traditional finance, we don't often see real time attestation. Why did Cash decide to integrate Chainlink Proof of Reserve and provide this real time transparency when even in traditional finance, this isn't a requirement? So basically, I think the, the you know, like for us, it's like how to do this from scratch and to bring like, you know, more enhanced uh, transparency to the minting process. And that's why we integrated like the chain link and the chain link reserve system as well, because having like, you know, like this uh, Oracle, which is kind of like the, you know, the Bloomberg of crypto, we would like, you know, it gives us a, a strong, uh, it gives us a strong value proposition, especially in the transparency. Now, we, we touched upon how you use the proof of reserve feed in your minting process. Can other DeFi protocols use the cash gold proof of reserve feed? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, uh, so basically you can use the proof of reserve feed to, uh, to kind of verify, right? So like, let's say you have a DeFi protocol that's like a lending protocol, or, you know, you're, you're, you're accepting uh, CGT as collateral. You want to know that, okay, is the, uh, is the amount of gold actually there? And you can use uh, the proof of reserve system in your DAP uh, to kind of like verify that, okay, you know, is it out of, uh, like, is, is there enough supply? Right? Like, okay, there's the supply, is there enough gold backing that collateral? So you can actually just add this as a, like an, as a conditional, and then uh, you could verify it before you, uh, like, you know, either you have a circuit breaker or, you know, uh, if you the bridge, you know what to do. You can, you can pause, pause, uh, pause your contracts and things like that. Yeah. So it, it, I think it adds a lot of value for uh, uh, like B2B applications. And we kind of like, you know, really would like to promote those applications and promote developers to make applications using uh, CGT and the cash gold uh, chain link proof of reserve system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for a lot of these protocols where they're multi pooled, one asset can affect the entire protocol. The ability to, you know, pause deposits based on the proof of reserve feed against the token supply is extremely valuable. Um, you can even get into ideas where LTV ratio changes depending on your uh, balance. So I, I think the opportunities are, you know, endless with this information. I want to ask about cash gold tokens future. You've integrated proof of reserve. You're on Uniswap. You're on you know several other exchange platforms. Uh, is there a plan to incorporate more DeFi? Is there a plan to go multi-chain? What do the next few months uh, look like for cash gold token? Uh, so th there are a few things. Uh, one is like we want to uh, yeah, we want to go multi-chain. So we are actually right now internally testing Polygon. We are already on Polygon. Uh, we're just like you know testing it because we have this like you know to uh, like. We have our own system. We have like on top of the Polygon bridge, uh, we have kind of added some more contracts to make sure that, you know, uh, we can we can do our own kind of control on it. Um, and uh, so, so, so yeah, so Polygon is one. We want to move into Arbitrum. Uh, any chain that kind of has this kind of bridge where we can uh, kind, of, kind of like uh, have some control uh, as, a, as a user. So that those are the, the, the main uh, chains that we're looking at. And then like, you know, I mean, of course that, I mean, I, we, we hope to go on ZK Sync as well. Uh, and uh, so th these are some of the, the plans for the, you know, like the future, uh, as well as uh, we want to do like, you know, so cash is not just about gold. We want to do other things. Uh, like, for example, you have a Rolex watch, you know, uh, so we want to make that into an NFT and then, you know, hopefully use the chain link proof of reserve system again to kind of like back it and then store that asset uh, on chain. Yeah. So those are some of the things, yeah. That, I'm, that, I'm, that hoping you, I'm hoping you do an airdrop with the uh, Rolex watch NFT. I'll be, I'll be watching <laughs> for that. Right. Um, but uh, on, a, on a more serious note, I think we have time for some uh, questions from the audience. Let's see. Um, okay, I'm going to, let's see. I see we have an anonymous attendee that asks, 
Um, can other companies use, I believe they mean Gram Chain. Can, so can other asset issuers use Gram Chain? Is it exclusive for you? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, so right now uh, we prefer to use cash. Uh, so, you know, you'll have to ask the grand chain team uh, on this a bit more, but like uh, for us, we, we do have like, if you can use uh, cash as the infrastructure there. So it, it, what we do for, uh, you know, plays like this is that like you can lock. So if, if you see the Explorer again, um, you, you, can, uh, you can lock a bar to a, like, let's say you're a company, right? Let's say you're company A. So in the in the explorer itself, uh, you can like if you see uh, in the safe house, like if you open the safe house, the first one, and if you open the first bar there, you can see like on the right hand side uh, a utilization by cash, and it's locked by uh, GSA, right? So GSA is uh, you know I mean you can go to goldsavingsaccount.singapore.sg, gold account, uh, goldsavingsaccount.sg if you can, but uh, it's basically a third company, third party company that wanted to do something similar. That means they wanted their own gram chain system. So yeah, what we did was, uh, you know, they use CGT as the underlying and we can lock CGT for like a particular specific bar just for you, right? So let's say, so you, because we already built this infrastructure to use Gram Chain uh, on top of cash. So instead of using Gram Chain directly, you can use uh, cash as a goal bar and we can lock particular goal bars to particular companies. So, you know, nobody else can redeem it, but you. So this goal bar is specifically allocated to GSA in this case. And so, uh, so it's, you know, so so that's the way that we would kind of like uh, direct you to, right? Uh, but of course, you can also like you know uh, link up with like if you go to gramchain.net and link up with the team. Uh, you know, you you, you could uh, uh, like there is the option that you could uh, build on top of that infrastructure again. But again, once again, I just like you know we have built uh, on top of Gramchain, we have built all these surrounding infrastructure, so it might be easier and worth your time to just like use cash. Uh, as the underlying uh, uh, system. That makes sense. No, I mean, that's one of the benefits we mentioned earlier with the uh, uh, programmability of these uh, off-chain assets is that people can build on top of cash. It's a smart contract. Your platform could you lock up cash, even on chain um, and build off of that. Um, I think there's some pretty interesting ideas uh, that could be built. You know, I've heard uh, some people have mentioned even like a gold-backed stable coin all on chain. So um, there's one use case. I'm curious, uh, we have the Q&A function, so if anybody has a question, feel free to um, use that button to submit one. Um, in the meantime, I've got a couple others for you, Diaz. I'm curious, you went through the Chainlink Proof Reserve integration process. Uh, we work very closely together. Um, if you could give some advice to someone integrating Chainlink Proof of Reserve, what would that be? Uh, yeah, I think it was quite easy to integrate, uh, you know, like, there was good uh, like documentation example contracts that could you know that was using it so it was quite uh, you know straightforward to integrate the proof of reserve system uh, and like you know you guys were super helpful to, to get that done uh, the only thing i would advise people is that like you know there's a lot of ancillary or like uh, surrounding infrastructure that might be required like if you want to have your own proof of reserve system like for example you need a dashboard to tell you like okay what's getting locked what's happening there and if you have multiple uh, if you have multiple uh, vaults, for example, or if you have multiple, like, you know, like data points, let's say you're, you're a USDC kind of a system, right? And then, you know, like true, true USD, if you saw that. So, you know, you might have like a lot of banks and then those banks have to, you know, give you APIs or, you know, you might have different things, right? And you just need to build like surrounding infrastructure to make sure that, um, uh, you know, you can support your own system. So. So that part's harder, uh, but I think the proof of reserve system integration was quite straightforward, yeah. That's good to hear. Um, we pride ourselves on our documentation, so I'm, I'm glad uh, it was straightforward. Um, maybe to, while we're waiting for some more user questions, uh, just to open it up, I'm curious um, if you have any predictions on this space in the next three years, maybe one bold prediction or thought, uh, maybe about real world assets, or really anything that floor is yours. Yeah, so on real world assets, I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, because it's for us, it's our business uh, model, right? So we need to figure out. And like, I think one thing that I think would be interesting, uh, like, I mean, you have this confluence of metaverse and then, you know, it kind of died down now. But I think the, like with anything, right? I think those things bring in some value and the value proposition of uh, you know, is always there. So I think like, if you, if you think of like something uh, like, Cool, uh, that could happen is that you know 
like say for example you have like this rolex watch or like an nft right and then you know imagine that you could uh yeah like collateralize that on rv uh, and then you know use the fees from the collateralization to do the maintenance for the watch you know so, so something like this right so yeah I think that's pretty much feasible where like a lot of the things that are physical move into the digital realm and you can then use it um, without, you know, having like intermediaries uh, and then uh, with these kind of like proof of reserve systems so you can trust it and uh, use it for collateralization and for different different things that uh, power DeFi or power you know, the crypto system. Absolutely. Yeah, I think proof of reserve really stands as a trust minimization tool um, all of these real world assets will, in my opinion, always carry some inherent trust assumptions, but I think what we aim to do is uh, mitigate those and, and limit those where possible. Uh, we have a few questions coming now. Um, one I know uh, you want to get to, uh, it's anonymous, but it says, does Cash plan to develop other vaults in other locations? Are there new, any new vaults coming? Uh, so we have, uh, so, you know, we have, um, like a partner called Brings. Uh, so Brings does have some walls and then we want to bring that online. But I think at the same time, we want to get more, uh, you know, supply up. Uh, so so it's kind of like figuring out uh, how to get more B2B businesses. So that's like, so, you know, the walls are uh, easier to do because we have our processes uh, kind of like defined, like in the testing tools are defined, the Gramsci system uh, with our partner is defined. So all these things are in place. We just like, you know, I think the focus right now is to improve supply before adding more walls. Uh, but, you know, happy to talk about it and, uh, like, uh, you know, move on that, yeah. Gotcha. I think you mentioned a new facility, um, one of the largest coming online. Uh, yeah, so we do have, yeah, so we do have this in Changi uh, in Singapore. So Singapore is like a friendly jurisdiction. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, it's, it, it has high security. So uh, it's an interesting world, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's coming up. It's called the Safe House. Uh, uh, the Safe House is building like the second, like like a big wall there. Uh, it's a boom. Awesome. I've seen pictures. It looks incredible. Um, Noah asks, and this is a clarifying question: Is Gramchain the actual custody provider here? Uh, and then, in that case, is CGT issuer relying on the services of the custodian for verification or a bar storage delivery, etc.? Can you clarify this? Uh, so Gramchain is basically the software. Uh, right, it's the asset tracking software, uh, whereas Cash is the kind of like custodian, right? Uh, so we are changing, uh, you know, we, we, we're trying to make the UI better to kind of like uh, make sure that's understandable. Uh, but yeah, so Cash is the like custodian. So uh, it's the, at the end of the day, the goal belongs to the user. Uh, this, if you have CGT, it means, uh, you know, you have the uh, underlying goal that, that backs it. Gotcha. Um, interesting question here. Do you anticipate that uh, any governments, maybe or other uh, large institutions, would use cash to deposit their reserves in the future? Uh, I mean, I mean, we'd be happy <laughs> to get them, but uh, you know, I mean, we don't uh, kind of like uh, we do KYC on the clients that come in uh, to deposit, but uh, you know, as long as they clear that, uh, I think there's, there's no, you know, we don't have any issue. And uh, I think it depends on the compliance uh, if they're okay with it. Uh, you know, but if if you see, do I see, do I foresee it? Uh, looking at the environment globally, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, it could happen. <laughs> yeah, it's likely to happen. Awesome. Um, let's see if we have any other questions here. We can get to. We answered quite a few already, um, and appreciate everyone who's asked a question. Uh, I guess people might want to know where can people, uh, where can anyone, I guess, stay up to date with cash. Um, you know, is there a Twitter website? Where does one stay up to date on all the new developments that you guys have coming up? Uh, so, you know, we have, we have the website like cash.gold and, uh, you can, you know, we have, we have our Twitter feed as well. Uh, so you, you know, these are where we kind of make the announcements and, uh, the website has a lot of tools to learn, uh, and, uh, you know, get, get more details about, uh, cash itself and how it works. Uh, the, the you know, it's all in there, like. It's all transparent. Uh, we also have the Explorer, which you know, it's on the website. You can go; it shows the gold backing, and uh, yeah, you can see, like you know, like from the Explorer, it links to you to the Chainlink proof of reserve as well. So you 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 can kind of like get the full picture, right? And uh, yeah, yeah. So I think the website is like the key. Cash .gold, yeah. Got it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. 
Um, feel free to submit your questions in the Q and A section. Um, uh, so maybe Max, while like you know we're waiting for more questions, maybe I can like kind of ask you something like uh, because it was kind of like nice working with you on the you know reserve system and like what what do you guys have for the future? Like you know what what other potential use cases are you planning for? It? Yeah, so I think like you, we see a, a range of new assets coming on chain, and I think figuring out the best way to bring that reserve data on chain is a priority for us. Um, you know, proof of reserve really started with working with DeFi protocols uh, through price feeds, um, and so it, a lot of the creation of the solution was from them asking, "How do we mitigate risk?" And I think the future of this product will also be driven by our conversations with these protocols who use these feeds on chain to see what they're looking for. Um, and so I think the future for proof of reserve is largely dependent on both the assets that come online, but also the asks from the DeFi protocols that utilize these feeds to manage their risk. Um, in, in terms of the future, I mean, I think, uh, I think stable coins, uh, proving reserves for stable coins is a huge opportunity. Um, you know, we're working with Arminino and Trust Token on that. Um, I think, you know, more real world assets like gold, uh, different financial products, tokenized real estate is very interesting when done correctly. And then uh, another space I think is, you know, ripe for opportunity is the carbon credit market. So I think all of these things uh, there's great potential for and proof of reserve can provide value for. So I think that's a little sneak peek of what might be coming next. Right. So like, you know, I mean, what is your bold prediction, you know, for the next few years? Like, what is your... <laughs> yeah. In, in the space, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think we're in an interesting position right now where, uh, you know, we're not heavily, the space is not heavily controlled or regulated. And so it's a bit on ourselves right now to kind of self-regulate and put a lot of these uh, safety mechanisms like proof of reserve in place. But there's no one really demanding that to happen. I think uh, the next year, we're going to see more DeFi protocols, you know, due to the last three to six months, really, take on themselves and uh, the initiative to include things like proof of reserve, additional circuit breakers, security checks, um, just because of recent events. And I think uh, the next year is going to be a great opportunity to set a standard for how this is done. I think we're going to see a lot of trial and error. We already have seen a lot of trial and error. But I think this next year, my bold prediction is we really see this come to be more of a standard. And you know, like the ERC-20 is the standard for uh, you know, tokens on Ethereum, I think we see a standard for these uh, tokenized off-chain assets in terms of how you va verify your reserves, um, how you redeem them, how you mint, how you burn. Um, I really think that's what we have an opportunity to do in the next year, and I think that's going to be the biggest uh, improvement in the space. I think, like, you know, like, it, it, you sh it, like, we shouldn't have any CFI without, like, the proof of reserve system, right? Like, you know, you didn't have the implosions that we saw if we could, you know, if there was not so much opaqueness into that system, right? So it's just kind of like, you know, uh, even other protocols, like, you know, even like, uh, uh, like things that kind of like imploded recently. So if they could use something like this, I think it brings, you know, it minimizes trust uh, that's required because even protocols that are comp like, you know, a lot of things are on chain, there's still some things that are off chain, right? So, you know, and, Kind of reduce that, like some proof of reserve system. If, the, if it's integrated, I think it, it's worth. Uh, it's like a standard. Yeah, I think yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, but I hope to see more of that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, looking forward to seeing more integrations of uh, the proof of reserve systems. Absolutely. Um, I see we have an audience question to transition back. That uh, you know, would Cash be able to provide similar services for assets such as? diamonds or commodities, you hinted at this a little bit. Um, is there a list that you guys have? And it, it, can you give us any alpha and maybe anything watching? Yeah. Sure. So uh, right now the focus is on getting gold out properly and doing like, you know, getting getting that done very well and uh, making it like, you know, like the best that we can. Uh, we do, so, you know, like like as mentioned before, like the, the, like the reserve, which is the new capacity, you know, large uh, capacity wall that's been built, they have a lot of silver, like they can store up to 15,000 tons of silver. So, uh, you know, silver is interesting, right? Uh, especially with the silver to gold ratio. Uh, and then, of course, other commodities, uh, you know, we are, we are actually interested in doing it, uh, like precious metals, you know, precious stones, all these things are, you know, something that we can do. Uh, it's just that, uh, you know, 
like currently for cash like the focus is on gold uh, and then the next thing uh, right up this thing is like like you know nfts right so like uh, uh, and those can be like uh, so powering people to do create those nfts so cash wants to be like a, like an infrastructure layer for other b2b's to do like yeah if you want to do like diamond storage or if you want to do like a rolex watch storage we want to be able to create that uh, that layer so that's that's definitely in the next uh, next uh, focus for us and uh, uh, besides going multi chain so these are these are the two kind of like two pronged approaches that we have going forward so yeah Got so it. it's coming uh, i hope soon <laughs> yeah we're excited hopefully we can work with you on proof reserve for those as well yeah, um, sure. time for one more question jeff is asking how much gold is in your reserve I think this may be a good opportunity to pop up uh, the data.chain.link page uh, to answer this question. Um, let's see if we can pull that up. Let's trust the system. Yeah. Um, yeah so the, go ahead. Yeah. So, so you know, as, as you can see, like, so we had uh, like, like, a, a couple, you know, like two months back, about 100 grams of gold, uh, sorry, uh, 100,000 grams of gold, but like, now uh, a few redemptions happened and it's gone down to 78, uh, 923 grams of gold. So yeah, so this is exactly how much grams of gold is there. You can tally this with the explorer to make sure that you know it's not more uh, or you know sorry it's not, it's not less, right? Uh, yeah. So so this kind of like you know uh, it's like uh, completely uh, no clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how much how much is actually there. Yeah. Excellent. Um... This is also available on chain on Etherscan if you want to view it there. But uh, the data.chain.link tool is a nice visualization for this. Um, yeah, so these are just 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 to add on. Those are like so you can see like the drop, right? So that drop is basically somebody redeeming their bar. So that drop is like I think around ten kilos. Yeah, ten ten kilos of gold went out of the system uh, or got redeemed by some users. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, we're about out of time for today. Um, I do want to ask, we're going to post a survey link uh, here in the chat. And uh, if you have thoughts on how this presentation went or items you'd like to see more of in the future out of Chainlink Tech Talks, please uh, let us know. Um, I want to thank Diaz. Uh, I think, it, what, what time was it there in Singapore when we started this? I think it's like 6, 6.30. We start, uh, like, sorry, 7. Yeah, 7. So now really? it's uh, closing to 8. You can see the sun coming up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Really appreciate your time and I appreciate everyone who joined today. Um, uh, these tech talks are a lot of fun. We get to talk with projects like yourself uh, who we think are doing a great job. So um, thank you for your time and uh, we'll talk to everyone soon. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Thanks, guys.